So in this video, we want to find the current density of a medium length P injunction diode. And what do I mean by medium length? Well, I mean, if we've got a P injunction diode with a P side and an N side, and we know that the holes, uh, if we just draw the depletion region real quick, we know that the holes will diffuse over to the N side. And then if this were a long diode, we'd expect this, the whole concentration delta P uh, in the N region as a function of X to fall off exponentially to zero by the edge of the junction diode. And similarly, we, we'd expect the electron concentration delta N on the P side as a function of X to fall off exponentially towards zero. But in both these cases, we assumed that this length L, and we're just gonna assume, or actually let's call this W. Uh, let's call this region W. So we previously assumed that W is much, much less than the diffusion length LN and LP. And that just allowed us to plug in in our uh, B, times e to the x over ln, that let us plug in infinity uh, in this term. And it allowed us to ignore this second term in the differential equation that we were solving. But we can't do that anymore. Like, let, let's say that w, uh, let's say w is 10 microns and ln is six microns. Then we can't say that w is much, much greater than ln because that's not justified. So if we wanna be precise, and if we want a general expression for the current density of a diode of any length, uh, then we're gonna need to do a little bit more work. And it's exactly the same process as solving for uh, the current density in a long diode or a short diode. It's just that we can't make the same nice assumptions that we made before. So the process of simplifying the expression is much, much nastier <laughs> than, than you're typically used to. So in previous videos, we said that, uh, well, if I want to solve for the whole, or let's say we want to solve for the electron, uh, if I want to solve for delta N of X inside the P region, uh, we said that that was described by the differential equation, by the continuity equation, which in the region outside the depletion region simplified to this relatively simple equation, that the second derivative of delta N was equal to delta N over LN squared, where we said LN was the diffusion length. It had to have units of length, and it's just equal, or LN squared, uh, and it's just equal to the diffusion length DN times the carrier lifetime tau N. So this was the differential equation that we came up with in our derivation of the PN junction current. And in this case, we're going to proceed to solve it but we're going to do so without throwing out any of the extra terms. So we know in general, the solution to this differential equation looks like this. Uh, delta N of X is gonna be equal to some coefficient A times E to the minus X over LN plus some coefficient B times E to the X over LN. And now to actually solve this, uh, we need to generate two equations from this differential equation. So we need to plug in two different value of x. So x1, x2, they can be whatever we want um, in order to find uh, a and b. And so we need two locations of x where we know the concentration. That's all that uh, applying boundary conditions is. is generally we know the, what the concentration should be at the boundaries. So if we take a look at our PN junction again, Just draw it out real quick. Um, we know that on the, let's, let's solve it on the P side. So we're gonna solve for the electron concentration. We know that this width is W. We know that this, this is XP, uh, but the depletion region size isn't really relevant here. What's important is that we know the electron concentration at this boundary. Uh, we know, and specifically we know the change in electron concentration, which is what we're really interested in. So we said from previous videos that we could calculate, we could use the equation 
for the built-in potential VBI, which is just phi t times the natural log of Na times Nd over Ni squared. And we saw that if we massaged this equation uh, a bunch and we plugged in, instead of VBI, we had VD or VBI minus VD because we're reducing the built-in potential by some voltage that we're applying, then we saw that we were able to get an expression for delta N. And that was just that uh, delta N on the P side was just equal to the electron concentration on the N side, which we generally know because we have the doping concentration, uh, times e to the VD over phi T minus one, uh, times e to the minus VBI over phi t. Or we can group these nn knots and e to the minus VBI over phi t into one physically more meaningful uh, parameter, np naught, or the electron concentration on the p side at thermal equilibrium, uh, times e to the VD over phi t minus 1. And so we know this is what the electron concentration should be at the boundary. Uh, so this is what it should be when x equals zero. And so if we plug that into our equation that we've uh, we've run away from, um, we see that a times e to the zero. Well, that's just that's just one. So a plus b uh, is equal to delta n p naught. And I'm not going to expand this uh, into what we what we know because this is just a number. Delta n p naught is just a number. It depends on the bias voltage VD or the diode voltage. It depends on the temperature through the thermal voltage, and it depends on the uh, electron concentration on the P side, which is a function both of doping on the N side and doping on the P side. So we're just going to encapsulate all this information into one constant, delta NP naught. Now the second boundary condition we have is a little more difficult to come by uh, because previously we said that we just plugged in x is equal to infinity, and then we inferred, well, b must be equal to zero. But we can't do that here because we have a finite length of diode. So we need to plug in x is equal to w. Um, and when we do that, um, we see that we have a times e to the minus w over ln plus b e to the w over ln equals what? What is What should be here? Um, well, the, the easiest way I can think of to describe this or to figure out what this is, is that if we've got a PN junction and we apply some voltage to the P side, so some voltage VD to our PN junction, and the other side is grounded, and we know that any holes uh, injected over to this P side, by the time they get almost to the edge of the wire, so by the time they're about here, uh, the voltage, since this is very close to ground, uh, the voltage or the potential energy of the hole, uh, QV, um, should be approximately zero. And we know that the poten potential energy can come from two different sources. It can come from a concentration gradient, or it can come from an electric field in the context of uh, semiconductor physics. And we know there's no electric field because we assume that was entirely within the, P, the uh, depletion region. And so the concentration gradient, uh, since there's no potential energy left, there must be no concentration gradient left. Or another way of saying that is delta P uh, must approach zero as we get to the very boundary of the semiconductor. And so here we can just write in now a zero. So we've got two equations and two unknowns, uh, A and B. And in the next video, we're going to be solving uh, these two equations. I'm just going to show you my favorite way of uh, solving them using linear algebra. And then we're going to get a final expression, a much prettier expression uh, for the current density as a function of x. And this is a a general expression. So it's going to be valid for diodes of any length. And we're going to see how it reduces to uh, our previous, what, what we had previously for a 
an infinitely long diode and for a very short diode. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below and I'll see you next time.